All right, hi everyone, welcome back. So today, I want to show you three different methods that you can use to export an end cloth object and have it retain its shape so that you can take it into other programs. Uh, first, we'll need to make something, so we're going to make a pillow. Um, go up to your shelf and add a cube into the scene. Here's our cube. And press T on the keyboard to bring up their polycube window, and we'll change some of these values. So I'm going to make a queen size pillow. A queen size pillow has a dimension of 3 by 2. Um, but you can make whatever shape you like. And for the height, we don't need much at all. So I'm going to go with 0.05 because we'll be inflating this pillow or this cube. Um, so for the dimensions or the subdivisions, let's make it 50 um, by 50. So 50 in the width and 50 in the depth. All right. So this is what we have. I'm going to open up the outliner and you can see it over here. Uh, next, we'll need to turn this into an end cloth object. So to do that, let's switch to our effects workflow. Up here on the upper left, we have this modeling, and then there's a drop down. Change it to effects. That'll give you access to the effects tabs up here. Um, select your object, and then we're looking for this end cloth uh, tab. Open up that drop down, and then click on create end cloth. All right. So nothing's really happened, but you can see on the left here in the outliner, we have our end cloth one as well as our nucleus object. So Open up your attribute editor, and you can find the nodes for those over here. Um, the nucleus object is right here. And the first thing we'll want to do is turn off the gravity. So drag the gravity slider down to zero. And the reason for that is we're about to run a simulation, and we don't want this object to fall. Um, also, these nodes, you can find them on the main object itself. So if I click, uh, click on the main object, right, I just have to mouse wheel down and find uh, the nucleus or the end cloth shape. Right, so here's my uncloth shape, and we're looking for pressure next. So there's pressure drop down, and let's give it a bit of pressure. Go with maybe 0 0.015, and uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, we're about to run the simulation, so I need my time slider and my range slider. I'm working in my own workspace, so I'm just going to switch it to the classic view. That'll give me the sliders down here. You may already have this because you might be in classic view already. Um, and then down here in the lower right, we have a cog wheel. This is the animation preferences. So click on this, and we just want to make sure that we're going to play every frame. We'll get a nicer uh, simulation. Right. And then all we have to do next is uh, click play. And you can see the simulation is running. It's pressurizing this cube, and it um, actually depressurizes a little bit, and it looks a little bit like a pillow. After it gets to the end of this timeline, it'll actually restart. So what we need to do is just stop it once we get the look we want. So we'll pretend this is the look we want, right? Actually, I just want to stop it now to show you something. Um, so it stopped right here. If I drag the slider forward a little bit, it kind of continues on that simulation. If I drag it backwards, though, uh, take note that it actually isn't doing anything. But if I move it forward again, it just continues on that simulation. So. I'll show you how to fix that uh, when we do the third method, which is the most versatile of the three, um, just so that you can go back in that sequence. All right, so first I'm going to drag the slider back to one, and you'll notice that it resets, right? So this is important because that plays a part into what the mesh looks like when we um, export it and re-import it. All right, so let's run this simulation again, and this time I'm going to stop it once I get that look I want. And you can see that it looks like a pretty good pillow, right? For something like this, you'll probably want to make sure that you UV unwrap it beforehand. I'm going to stop it right here. And um, I think that's pretty good. Next, let's try and export this. So you don't have to do this next part if you don't want to, but you can follow along if you like. Select your object, Control D to duplicate it. And I'm going to move it over here. So we have a copy. And when we make a copy, uh, usually it deletes the history, right? Um, but it's left something here. It's the output cloth, right? And if I try and delete the history again, nothing really happens. So um, that will play into part as well. For now, let's just select this object and export it. Go up to File, Export Selection, and we're going to export it as an FBX, and I'm going to call it um, Pillow 1. All right, it's giving me a warning here. I'm just going to close this, though. And now let's uh, delete this and re-import it. The reason why I'm deleting it is that that way I don't have to rename it. Maya doesn't really like it when it has uh, two objects that are named the same thing. So I'm just going to delete this and let's import what we just exported. 
So file, import, and we're looking for our pillow one FBX. Here we go. And there we go, there is our pillow. And you can see right away we have um, a couple issues. So the first one's pretty obvious. It looks nothing like our pillow. And the second one is that it lost that material connection and um, that was the pop-up window that you saw, right? Uh, we can add the material on easily by just adding on, on a material again, but we still have the issue that doesn't look anything like this. So let's just delete this. And this time I'm going to uh, make a duplicate and we're going to export it as an OBJ. So the first method will be just to export it as an OBJ. Now when it comes to games, most of the time you're just working with FBXs, um, just because it's more common, it contains animation information, and um, it's just a very common uh, format. But sometimes you don't need an FBX, and you can use OBJs if you want to. So I'm going to select this mesh, go to File, um, Export Selection, and down here for File Type, let's change it to OBJ. And we just don't want to name this something, so I'm going to call it this Pillow 2. There we go. All right, let's delete this one and re-import it. So we'll go to File, Import, and we will import um, this OBJ. So this is method 1, and you can see it works quite well. We have this object that looks like what we had before, and there are no issues. So when you don't really need anything um, too complicated, right? You don't need an FBX. You can use an OBJ just because it's the fastest, fastest method of the three that we'll be uh, showing today. Um, all right, so I'm gonna delete this one. Now, that's great and dandy, but maybe you wanna export this as an FBX. So I'm gonna select this object. I'm gonna make another duplicate. And to export this as an FBX, um, this next method is kind of like the combine and separate method. It's a, a little bit strange, but it works really well. So we're gonna take this object and we're going to combine it with another one. It doesn't really matter what it is, but I'm going to add a cylinder into the scene. So we have this cylinder and we have this one. So I'm just gonna box select these two. Let's open up our modeling toolkit and we're going to combine it. It makes it one object, but then we're going to separate it right away. So both of the objects are in this group. So we have our cylinder and we have the object. So here's the cylinder, here's the object. We're only interested in this one. So I'm gonna select this object and I'm going to actually just unparent it from this. So this is real, isn't really a necessary part, but I don't really want it in this group. So I'm gonna hold down shift and press P to unparent it. Um, the nice thing about this method is now I can take this object over here in the attribute editor, right? I have everything here. I can try and delete that history. So delete history. And you can see it's actually deleted some history. And now I'm going to select this object, go to File, um, Export Selection. And we will export this now as an FBX. And we'll just call this uh, Pillow 3. All right, so we exported. Let's just delete this one. And we don't really need this cylinder group or this transform history. So I'm just going to uh, delete uh, these three, four objects here. All right, so now let's uh, try and import that pillow again. So file, uh, import, and we're looking for pillow three FBX, which is right here, and import. And you can see now it looks exactly like this object and it has a very clean history over here. So that's awesome, right? All right. So now um, we have two really good methods, and now I want to show you the third one, which I said was the most versatile of the three, my favorite of the three, actually. I'm going to delete this one. So we have this object here. What we're going to do with this um, object is we're going to cache this animation. So let's drag this slider back. So we have this object over here, and we're going to go back to our effects workflow, go to the drop down, choose effects again, and up here you have something called end cache. So click on this and there's a create new cache um, option, and we have an option between object and Maya fluid. We're gonna choose object, but I'm just gonna open up the option box for a second so you can see. Um, we're choosing the time slider. So it's going to cache whatever's in there, but if you only wanted to cache one frame, you could easily change it to start end and just choose one frame if you wanted to. All right, let's click create, and um, it'll go through that simulation and it'll cache it for us. So it's running through, that's awesome. And the best part about this is we can go back 
earlier in that sweet, uh, sequence in the animation. So it stopped at frame 120, right? And now if I take the slider, you can see that it just runs through that. So that's pretty awesome. Um, and if you wanted to, you can combine this with uh, method two, right? You could make a duplicate and use method two where you combine it with another object to export it as an FBX, but I'll show you a better way. All right, so here is the animation or the cached animation. So what we wanna do is transfer this onto the mesh itself. So select your object, go up to end cache, and what we wanna do is transfer the cache to input mesh. Click on this and nothing's really happened, but we can select this object now and we can actually delete this end cloth. And so select your object, go to end cloth. Let's first delete the history and then we'll also remove that end cloth. So now both are gone. So the history is gone and the end cloth. We can also delete the nucleus, don't need it. And if we take the slider now, it's on this uh, mesh. So just like that. And we can stop anywhere we want. So say we like this state of the animation, we can select it, make a duplicate, right? So we can have one version of the pillow and maybe we wanna go in here and run through here again and maybe go down here a little bit more, make another duplicate and we have second pillow. You can also use this mesh and um, re-simulate another um, animation onto it, right? So add an end cloth again, but the nice thing about these objects is they're ready to be exported. So I'm gonna select this object and I'm going to, actually, I don't need, need one of them. So let's just delete this one. So let's select this object, go to file, um, export selection. I think we're up to pillow four now. So we'll go pillow four and then click export selection. And I'm just gonna delete this one. And now let's re-import the other one. File, import, pillow four. And there we go. Just like that, we have um, this mesh that has a very clean history. And we still have this one and we can still play with this if we want to and um, find other states for um, the meshes if we wanted to, right? So yeah, those are three methods. Um, each one has their own kind of benefits, right? The first one being the quickest, second one being works very well, but it works for FBXs, so that's nice. And then the third one, um, you can find other states for the animation. So hope you like this tutorial. Um, that's it for this one. We will see you in the next. Uh, this has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.